Hello, and welcome to my podcast. I am Nitwim. You can find me on Ravelry as Nitwim. This is my first official episode, so I'm just going to get right into it. I have one FO. This is the Crooked Cathedral Shawl, and I don't have any notes today, so I will put the pattern down in the comment section. But I really liked knitting this pattern. I cast it on the day before I went on my honeymoon and just knit it the entire time. I had five hours on the plane to knit, which was great, and then I just knit it every now and then. I was there for two weeks in Coronado. It's amazing. And this was perfect. I really enjoyed um, the lace pattern, and then I think the white pearl beads, I don't know if we can get you to see those. I really like how they look in the blue. I originally started with size 5 needles, which is what the pattern calls for, and I kind of felt like it was too loose. I, I know I knit loose, and so I was kind of panicky, and I switched to size 2s, but I think I probably could have gotten away with knitting it on the 5s. And uh, I didn't have any extra needles with me. I, I didn't have anything except for my actual projects when I went. So I didn't have any extra needles or any darning needles or anything like that. So I did the bind off also in the size 2, which, I mean, if I were planning it out, I would have gone up the size. And it was really tight and horrible before I blocked it. And before I blocked it, it like ended like here. This is where it sat. And I was kind of unhappy with that. But fortunately, blocked it and now it sits. And it's really nice and lovely and perfect. And see how, I don't know, some people might want a bigger shawl, but this is the size I was going for when I made it. So, the shawl at size. I'm really happy with that. And the yarn, um, was a wedding present, so I thought it was kind of cool to do my wedding present yarn as my honeymoon knitting, so really cool. I have two whips today and a ghost project. We'll get into that. So my first project is I started another lace shawl because I, I can't not be knitting lace. This is the damask shawl, and it calls for fingering weight yarn, but for reasons that I'm not even clear on, I bought a DK weight. Um, this is the Barocco Vintage DK, and I'm not very far in um, because it's a 333 stitch cast on, and casting on for the large version, and the rows just take forever to do. And it's not hard, I mean, you're just doing the same repeat over and over and over a gazillion times, and then you hit center, when you think you should be done with the row and you realize you're at the center stitch and you have to go on. So, but it's really, I'm enjoying it. I, I don't know how I feel about the yarn yet. It's really soft and it's like really floppy. So I think it'll be great as a shawl. It doesn't have, like it doesn't have a whole lot of firmness, but it's a, it's a worsted, it's a worsted, it's a wool acrylic blend. So, um, I don't know. The, it, the label says it's machine washable. There are a lot of negative comments on Ravelry about how it still felts or pills horribly if you wash it in the machine. Um, but I got a comment on my blog from someone who said that this was one of their favorite yarns. So we'll see what happens. I will let you know how that goes. Um, the other project is it's both a new project and a frog project. I was doing the Old Joe Socks in uh, Dreaming Color Smushy Brown color. I don't know what the colorway was. Um, and I was trying to do two socks on one circular. And I got about an inch in, and I, ju I just wasn't feeling it. It was, I didn't like it. I'll probably do the pattern again later, just one sock at a time, magic loop, but I couldn't stand it. My sister came to visit, and she was knitting this mitten on the fly without a pattern, and it was adorable. It had a button on it, so that's probably what did it in for me. So I frogged the socks and cast on for the name. I'm going to copy her pattern. So it's the brown is the Dreaming Color Smushy. The green is um, Tannis Fiber Arts in Mallard colorway. And the green I already knit 
a pair of mittens with it. I, I did the um, Zombie Vixen mittens, and those were really cool, and I liked those. They were a gift for a friend, so I don't have them anymore, but I, I can generally get two mittens out of a skein of sock yarn, so I'm doing the green and the brown, and it's going to be green and brown stripes up until the, the palm, and then I'm going to change it up to blue and brown to use up the very last bits of this yarn. And I can't show you what the finished is, but basically it's just, it's just this all the way up until you get to um, the, this part of your hand, and then you switch to the bright color, the blue, and do a seed stitch. All trying to think about where I was. I'm losing some of the video footage that I did, so I'm trying to record bits and pieces from the middle of my video. So, talking about this mitten, the seed stitch goes all the way up here, and there's a buttonhole, and you fold it over, and it's really adorable. And I went to Hobby Lobby and got two different types of buttons. My sister's mittens are a, a muted brown and red, and they have that whole steampunk look going, so I was originally drawn to these, but my mittens are more of a candy goth clown carnival pattern colorway, so I think I'm gonna go with the wood ones. And they're a little bigger. So that's that. What else did I do? Okay, so I was showing you I have an almost finished object and a ghost. The almost finished object is the slick it mitts, and all I have left to do is the thumb. And Honestly, I've been sitting on this project for like a month because I'm not that thrilled about doing the whole picking up stitches and knitting in the round on DPNs and that tiny little loop and it's not even cold enough for mittens. So I haven't worked on that. But it could be done whenever. And then my ghost, Ravelry calls them hibernating pattern projects, but this I don't like that. It's not sleeping. It's it's haunting me. It's a ghost. I cast this on. Here we go again. I cast this on in November of 2012. And this is the uh, in paper mint pattern, um, which is really cool. And I originally started knitting this yarn. It's the Brooklyn Tweed Loft for the Flutterby pattern, but I I couldn't get gauged no matter what I did for that pattern, so I switched to this one. It's really pretty and I love it. I'm stalled on the second mitten with the tubular cast on. It's finicky to do and when I, I did it I didn't I didn't get the right number of stitches and so I just started doing the ribbing and added the stitches in to get my number. So I I don't know how that's gonna work. I might take it out. But that's that's the progress I've made on that. Enabling. Okay. So right now, I have a lot of projects going, and I only have three project bags. A couple of months ago, I didn't know what a project bag was. I left my projects laying out in the open on the floor, on the couch, on the dining room table. There wasn't really a whole lot of organization. If I piled them into a box, they all got tangled up together. Um, I like to carry at least one project in my purse, and that project is usually in a plastic bag so that, one, it doesn't get tangled in the other items in my purse, two, it doesn't get any weird crumbs or stray bubblegum or anything weird that might be floating in there so that my, uh, you can't see that, I'm counting over here, so that in case my hand lotion that I keep in my purse explodes, it doesn't get on my own. So I have a plastic bag for that project. But I have other projects that don't have bags. And so I've, I've been on the prowl for project bags. I've been watching Joanna Spring's podcast, uh, Knit Spin Farm, from, in chronological order from the beginning. And so I've been seeing that she had project bags that she was making that were adorable, but I couldn't have them because they were old episodes. She'd already sold them. So I, I cut up and I happened to check in on her shop at the right time to get a bag. So I have a bag, and it's adorable. 
and it came wrapped so beautifully that I just I couldn't open it without without showing you first. It's got this cute little sheep right there on the package. And look at the tag. I know it's it's backwards because it's a camera, but isn't that so adorable? I had to share. Okay, so now I'm gonna open it. Oh, before I open it, there's also a little stitch marker. She makes these. Aren't they pretty? I think she makes them with clay and then she puts beads on them. They're really cute. So, thank you, Joanna. Here we go. I don't know if you know this about me, but I secretly obsessed with the idea of having my own farm and raising chickens and sheep. I can't because I live in a cut housing community, every house looks the same area, but someday. So it's not a surprise that I got the chicken bag. I really, really she had a couple of different chicken fabrics and I was really attached to this one. The other one was a different print and it had a green top and I'm green's nice but I really liked the red and look at these chickens don't they have such great personality I apologize if you don't understand why chickens are awesome but just pause for a moment to just enjoy the fabric and she has two sizes of these bags she had a, a sweater size bag and then this is the small size project bag so it'll hold, hold. it'll hold my whole shawl shawl project in there and I could even I could even fit the extra two balls of yarn in there if I wanted it would be a little tight but they they would fit in there it would be fine we'll just grab one we could cram them all in here that's fine it looks happy when it's full My sister was here when I was thinking about buying the bag, and she just made this offhand comment that I shouldn't get it because she said, you could make that yourself. And I just wanted to take a moment to mention that because I know that a lot of us, we, we're crafters and we do think that a lot. You see something and you're like, oh, I could make that. Why would I, why would I buy that? And it's just, I mean, I could probably make it, but I don't have a sewing machine and I don't have fabric. And I'm sure that there would be a learning curve between getting those things and actually being able to make something this lovely. And I think sometimes, I mean, it's worth thinking about. You, ha you have to, if you're on the fence about whether you want to buy a knitting bag, you might, you think maybe you're gonna make one yourself, just ask yourself, do you really have everything you need to make one? Do you, are you going to actually make one anytime soon? Do you want a bag right now? It, it's worth it. It really is. It really is. I mean, unless you like are in the process of making them right now, that's different. But oh, I just thought that that was something that I wanted to throw in there. As I might have mentioned already, hard to tell the way my day is going, I ordered a spinning wheel. I'm super, super excited about it. I ordered it from a dealer on Etsy, um, and he's been really awesome to, to talk to. And it's, it's coming. It's, it's coming. It's in the mail. I don't have it yet. You would know if I. But I do have fiber. So, here we go with fiber. The first two are white, and I, I definitely, they're definitely going to get a Kool-Aid back um, once I spun them up. Eight ounces of Portuguese, whatever that is. I don't know couldn't find it in the fleece and fiber source, source book. A pound of domestic fiber. Eight ounces of BFL. I always stop to talk about this one. BFL is what I primarily spun. It's what I spun my hat out of. Um, but And it, it's soft. This is so much softer. So much softer. So nice. I cannot wait to spin this. I think it's going to be really great. The other BFL I spun was also in braids and I feel like maybe that compacts it and makes it more dense. This is just so open and just ready to be spun. It's so great. 
not as keen on the swirly brown and white colors because I, I know that's going to produce a marled single, but I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll like it. And then lastly, four ounces of Shetland. And even before I knew what about spinning and I was, I wasn't really into the whole fiber thing. I always felt that Shetland was this romantic wool because Brooklyn Tweed would always talk about it like it was this great thing. So now, this is my first Shetland. I, I don't think I've even ever knit Shetland. I just want to make sure I get it right. I don't know. I know that the yarn changes, like, the final characteristics of the yarn is dependent on the way you spin it in addition to the fiber that you use. So I think this would have great stitch definition if spun correctly. I don't know. We'll find out. I'll do research. I'm really excited to get spinning. Um, I can't wait for my wheel to come. It was on back order, and I think I still have two weeks. I'm trying not to like email and be like, where's my wheel, where's my wheel? Because it hasn't even been the length of time I was told. So, gotta be patient. I'm really excited though. The last thing I wanna talk about is Ply Magazine. I'm not gonna lie, I subscribed to Ply Magazine because Malia, rhymes with Maria from the Yarn Raising podcast, told me to. I knew about this magazine for a while. It, it had a Kickstarter campaign going, um, and I didn't participate. I knew I thought about it, but I'm not really impressed with most of the craft magazines out there, um, the knitting magazines especially. A third of the magazine is ads. You have to go through three pages of ads, and then you get like a tiny little article, and then more ads. and the articles are usually not that deep. They're usually either generic, broad, overarching themes, or they're basic stuff that you already know if you've been knitting for more than a year. And so I, I kind of stayed away from Ply. Then, in the most recent episode, I can't remember if it's episode 8 or 9 now, one of those episodes, Melia got her issue and she was just raving about how awesome the articles were and how they were they were great, not just for beginning spinners, but they had a lot of stuff that was interesting for more advanced spinners, and she just raved and raved and raved, so I subscribed. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't read any of the articles yet, and honestly, I mostly bought the magazine for the pictures because that's who I am. I, I like reading, but often I like looking at pictures more. And the pictures in this magazine are so pretty and the like like check that out this is one of the articles I'm most interested in reading spin for the blue it's all about what to think about if you're planning to spin uh, yarn specifically for a competition that's cool right and it's great all the articles look interesting I'm probably going to read it from cover to cover and just read everything in order and the ads are cleverly worked in like you have this whole spread that's article and you need that just that one ad on the page so it's I really like the layout and I'm so happy that I got this and like we have stealth reviews how cool is that I'm really looking forward to the, I just love looking at the pictures there's some really nice stuff in here I'm happy it's Malia's fault Malia's fault. I can't speak English. But yeah, that's my last. That's my last little bit of enabling. If you're interested in spinning, you know you want it. If only so that you can have magazines with spinning wheels to put on your coffee table, because who wouldn't want that? Freak out all of your guests. Sure. Stop. Yeah. You want to be on YouTube? La. Really? Because it looks to me like you really desperately want to be. Wait for the camera. Come on. <laughs> You're not saving that shit. I think I got to.